How does it work? Just four words can create such a nuanced question. At some level, we can describe the world through the forces that make things move. Yet going deeper, we can't describe the origins of our universe. Not like most of us need to worry about that anyways. But let me ask you, how does AI do things? How can it write your emails, run code, or interact with the world? Maybe not to the degree of how electricity is flowing through your computer, but rather how the information flows and to what. For some of you that have been developing AI systems for a while, the answer may be obvious. But for others, it just works. I for one never really thought about how these chatbots go beyond being simple printers of text. It used to be, oh, the AI searched the internet, or the AI ran the code in its environment, as though the AI is some sort of sentient being on the other side that can perform actions like you and I. But it wasn't until I started working on Project JEI Synth that I really started to see how much there is to unpack beyond the scenes. Hey there, Limit here, and this is Project JEI Synth. I guess I should say Project Vita now. It's my open source AI VTuber project that eventually anyone can use to create their own AI VTuber. And recently, I've been putting a lot of work into polishing up the features from the prototype into something that's actually more usable by my standards. Over the last 500 hours or so, there really hasn't been many new features, except for one, actions. This is letting your AI interact with things like sending Discord messages, searching the internet, or accessing long-term memories. And it's this feature where I truly went into it without really much of a plan or understanding for how things were meant to be done. But over several iterations during this time, I have developed a system that I'm pretty confident in and I want to share you my process of getting there. But before that, I think it's important to understand how this is different from the AI of old. It's not like AI didn't exist before ChatGPT. AI simply refers to a general solution to a general problem. If that sounds very broad, it's because it is. Even breadth first search is considered AI. However, machine learning is more like the AI we think of today, where some system can adapt itself to learn how to handle a situation. These have always been classifiers, a system that makes various yes or no decisions. Is this flower a lilac? Is this email spam? Should I turn left? It's no different from the LLMs that drive conversational models either. Is the next letter an A? What about a B? But the models of old are deciding actions and classifications, whereas conversational models are deciding tokens, and tokens aren't directly associated with any sort of action. So the challenge is how can we take a sequence of tokens and turn it into actions? Or in other words, how can we take text and turn it into actions? You, as a person, might think of what you want to do. For example, I want to click the subscribe button, which you totally should. However, you can also think, I'm going to click the subscribe button, or let me click the button that says subscribe. These inputs are extremely varied from the perspective of code, with no real way to account for all the variations except for, once again, using AI. Maybe we can use a classification AI to click subscribe or not based on the text input. Well, now we have one little model dedicated for that, and that just isn't going to scale for all possible actions like pressing like on this video. Okay, so we can't turn regular old statements into computer actions feasibly. How do us humans even work with computers to begin with then? That's right, programming. We can have the AI write code and we execute that. Except when was the last time you've seen an AI spit out code that works first try? I guess that's also the case for humans as well. So we need something that's just more foolproof in general. But just like how script kitties don't need to write code to run programs, why don't we let the AI just run scripts? We need to write a script for each functionality, but it should be way easier than training a whole new model. And we've been writing these scripts for years now with the existence of bots, scrapers, and whatnot. We'll call these scripts tools, and hence the actions are tool calls. That's what it is. The tools you see on ChatGPT and whatever, these are just scripts and functions made available to the AI model. The model is told the API for these scripts, and it just has to generate the inputs to that script in order to use it. And so, when the user prompts the AI with a request, it will perform a series of tool calls, get back the information, and add those back as context, before finally giving a response to the user with all the context that it has gathered. This is all stuff that I had thought about before going into this. And while I was testing systems for long-term memory and internet searching, which I will be making proper videos for in the future because it goes deep, I decided to also apply this idea to turn them into tools used by my chosen models. The functions implementing memory retrieval and internet searching only had one argument, that is a search query. So initially, I just ran the functions every time, using the user's input as the search query and adding the results to the conversation history as another user input. That is generally how tooling results are given back to the AI model anyways. However, the solution wasn't flexible and the user input usually couldn't be used as a search query a lot of the time. So I would have another AI model generate this search query based on the conversation history thus far. 
In the system prompt, I described my tools, their purpose and the parameters I was expecting, which was just a search query for now, and I told it how to respond. When it was just one tool, I just specified the entire response would be used as a search query. However, with multiple tools, I accounted for the selection of tools by having each line start with the tool name and the rest of the line being the search query. This way, the model can choose which tools to use and also has the option to use multiple tools. It was tedious to parse the results using regex, but this method did work for the very simple case with two tools I hard-coded the prompts and parsing for and with both having just one input parameter. However, the problems are already obvious. Sure, if I wanted to add a new tool, I could just make a new function, add it to the prompt, and parse it out of the response. But what about when I want to add or remove dozens of tools at a time? What about a tool for sending a message to a specific person on Discord? A description for such an API is much more complex. Managing more tools is going to be a pain, and we need a better solution for tools with more complex APIs. Thankfully, something has already been developed to make this easier. You've likely heard of MCP before. Yeah, it's another one of those AI buzzwords that's been beaten into the ground alongside agentic and reasoning, but for as overhyped as it is, it's still useful. At its core, MCP is not the complete framework for connecting your models with scripts. It's mainly a protocol, hence the name Model Context Protocol, just like HTTP for web browsing. This standardized what information should be available and what the API should look like. Namely, the information available alongside each API endpoint is the name, a description, and an input schema for that tool. When a tool is made available, you request for these details and modify the system prompt at runtime. Include a description for what you want to do with this information, and you have yourself a model that can call these tools. So now the sequence is as follows. Start the application running your model. This is the MCP client. If your MCP server containing your tools isn't already running, you can run them now. But once it's running, create a session with the MCP server and retrieve a list of the endpoints along with all their names, description, and input schemas. These endpoints include tools, but also other stuff like resources and templates, but those are just worse versions of tools anyways. Using this information, create a system prompt that describes what to do with the given information, a list of all the details, and how to format the responses. When the user provides an input, first prompt the model for tool calling, providing the constructed system prompt along with the conversation and tooling history. Then parse out the response. Since you already know the input schema ahead of time, you can reuse the same logic for parsing tool inputs for all tools. Call the tools and append the response. Finally, add the results to the conversation as hidden messages and prompt your model for a response like normal, which will be displayed to the user. And just like that, we have scalable and flexible tool calling. There's still the problem of complex input structures, but after seeing how the input schema uses JSON schema, I remembered I could just have the LLM output its tool calls as JSON and parse it using built-in parsers instead of reinventing the wheel here. And just as an added note, because I was bashing my head over this for a bit of time, oh. to load up a dynamic list of connections, don't use Python's built-in context manager using the with statement. Just use the underlying context manager functions so you don't have to hard code nesting context managers. Also, samplers in MCP are used by servers to use the AI model running in the client. I also wanted to run other models such as embedding models in the client and may be useful to the servers as well. So I hacked some of the unused variables as conditions to switch between models. This is currently what's in Project JEI Sim, and I'm pretty happy with this. However, there's still one problem that I recently fixed in my own version of Project Vita. You've probably seen the LLM spit out gibberish, and you've also seen it hallucinate information and structures. Well, that can still very much happen even when providing the input schema, and such malstructured inputs can wreak havoc in your system. We could validate the input like any sensible API, but then we need to retry the tool call, which is costly and might fail again. So to avoid this, there's something called structured outputs, and specifically JSON schemas. Structured outputs is a set of rules that specify what a valid response should look like. JSON, for example, always starts and ends with curly brackets. However, structured inputs does not check the contents beyond syntax. To solve this, JSON schemas go further to specify the fields and types for JSON responses in particular. OpenAI and Llama CPP support this to constrain the outputs of the LLM to make sure the next generated token does not violate the structure, meaning your response is right every single time. To create these rules, it's just a JSON schema specification, the same one used by the MCP servers as input schemas, and you can create a rule that incorporates all possible tool calls. This is what I have for my JSON schema. Notice how alongside the input schema, I'm also including the name of the tool and the name of the MCP server. This way, I constrain it so that for a specific tool, it can only have the associated input schema and none of the other ones. Once again, this generates only valid JSON, but this time in a predictable format that I can easily parse to get the correct tools to call with the correct inputs. 
Using that in the system that already exists in Project JSON gives you a robust system for integrating functionality with your LLM. But remember, you can approach this any way you want, really. For example, the new model I'm using for JEISEN isn't smart enough to directly tool call. So instead, I have her model declare some intended actions and outcomes, and that is fed to a smarter AI model for tool calling. This effectively incorporates JEISEN's personality to guide actions without needing to extensively train on JSON or tool calling datasets. You may also want to iteratively request tool calling responses if you want to handle situations where tools need to be used in a sequence using the results from previous steps. That's up for you to decide. And remember, my way isn't necessarily the right way. But hopefully this gave you enough insight to answer, how does it work? I also hope that this is enough proof to you that I'm still alive and grinding. I know these videos have been pretty spaced out lately, but trust me when I say I've been cooking. Anyways, if you want to stay tuned for future updates, subscribe and maybe join the Discord. I also stream on Twitch, so come say hi during one of the regular coding and gaming streams. Anyways, that's all for today. I'm gonna get up and out of your way. Thanks for watching.